We got a glimpse in all the starter decks for Overdress, and nothing is what we expected. Hey Car Fighters, last week Bushroad revealed the card list for not one of the new starter decks, but for all of them. And with that, they gave us insight in what these starter decks will contain for the respective nation. And these lists tells a very interesting picture that somewhat confirms certain beliefs that we had, but also is a bit unexpected in some extreme cases as you are going to see in this video. But before we're going to dive in the other starter deck list, I want to first take a look once again at the Dragon Empire list because we are familiar with it and it can help us to at least set the basis for what we're going to see in a moment for the other starter decks. So here we have the list that we already know about the Dragon Empire starter deck. Now, we can see a couple of things that immediately strikes as odd or catch the eye. Of course, the odds ratios, the trigger lineup, the order card that's going to be included in the starter deck, and of course, the main focus on the archetype that is Blaze Maiden or the Blaze archetype, as we also have a couple of Blaze monks. Now, there are four things that would be the same for every single starter deck, and it allows us to paint a basis picture that we can expect for every single starter deck from the first wave. Every one of the starter decks is going to have a focus around the right deck and have four units that are specifically made for that right deck. And those are the four top left cards on the list itself. And this has been confirmed even further with the reveal of the Great One Blaze Maiden Reno for the Dragon Empire starter deck that has a Vanguard centric skill that activates when she's ridden or when there's ridden on top of her with the specific unit. Now the second thing that is going to be generic for these starter decks is that they have a main archetype but at the same time they also have cards that have names that represent other archetypes or other clans. In this case for Dragon Empire one that's the Blaze Maiden or the Blaze archetype and then we see two cards Escort Stealth Dragon Hayashi Kaze and Iron Ball Dragon Enki Bowler which sounds like other our clans the one Enki Bowler and the Hayashi Kaze sounds like a Nubatama Tachikaze card. This is going to be the same pattern as we're going to see for the other starter decks. Now the third one is the trigger lineup. The trigger lineup is going to be identical for all the other starter decks. So every starter deck is going to have one over trigger, four criticals, four draws, three fronts, and four heals. This is going to be for everyone. Now the final thing, and this is kind of surprising, but for some people they expected this. All the starter decks are going to have an inclusion of an order card that is going to work with the respective mechanic of the deck. So every trial deck or every starter deck will have a unique order card tailored toward the respective strategy. Now with that said, let's take a look at these other starter decks because yes, those four statements might be true for every one of them. The rest is gonna look very different. So the first one that we're gonna take a look at is the Dark State starter deck. And... This one is rather boring, you could say, because it's so generic in a way that the lineup of the units, the grade distribution, is basically what you would expect from a starter deck. Like, we have 8 grade 3s, we have 10 grade 2s, and then we have 12 grade 1s, and then of course we have 3 copies of the grade 1 order. This is what you would expect. The only interesting thing here is that the main archetype is going to be the Diabolus, that's basically the Spike Brother-ish cards, but we see cards with the name Colossus, Fist Colossus, sounds like a Gear Colossus card. We have a Steam Gunner one, so another Gear Chronicle-ish card. Acrobat Presenter sounds like Pill Moon, and Ein Iser sounds like a Dark Regulars unit. And the order card is called Brother Soul. Now, this is definitely going to do something with the Diabolus card and their finishing blow tactic that the main deck is going to revolve around. Now, at the same time, it doesn't have a great zero like Trickster, but that doesn't mean they won't have an overdress mechanic. But it can also be that there isn't an overdress mechanic in this starter deck, but they might get one in the main set itself. That's just something that we don't know so far. And who knows? Maybe Steam Gunner Brody. Overdress into a time visioning fist colossus. Like, who knows? Now, even though the Dark Stage one is kind of boring in what we can see, the Cater Sanctuary is everything except boring. Because if we take a look at their list, 
we can see something insane going on here because yes you see that correctly this list has 12 great threes and if you want to count in the great free order they have 16 great threes that's a hefty amount of focus on the great free part and if we take a look at the great twos they only have four great twos the main great two in the right deck itself that's it and then for great ones they have 13 great ones and that's it so yeah i'm kind of curious what type of focus they might have for this deck because it's mainly the great freeze and that can mean that defensive options might be very limited as great freeze usually don't have shield so i'm very curious of what type of direction is going to be now as for the units themselves the main things are going to be knights off so very royal palinish but we do have a witch in a mix with vaven mage romana and Shadow Bow Archer Lissana, which sounds like a Shadow Paneling card. Now, the Witch might also be a Genesis card. For the rest of the cards themselves, yes, the perfect guard is a life saving Angel Kura Beal. So, sounds like Angel Feathers, but it's just a perfect guard, so that doesn't really tell us anything. But overall, this showcases that the ratios, just like the Kagero one, can be quite off than you would assume. But this is very much in the extreme scope of things with the heavy focus on great great freeze however it isn't the only one because if we're going to take a look at the starter deck for story kea they take it in the opposite direction because instead of heavily focusing on great freeze and dropping the great twos this one is dropping the great freeze and heavily focus on the great twos because they only have one great free and that is the main card himself and further than that they have a ridiculous amount of grade twos because they have a total of 17 grade twos if we include the two grade two order cards named call of the call to the beast so this is going to be heavily focused on around grade twos and it makes sense because this is a multi-attack uh nation and usually the multi-attack skills are tailored to the grade twos themselves so it makes sense that they focus more on grade twos but this is kind of ridiculous if you think about it now in the vein of what type of cards we can expect in artwork wise the main focus is going to be the sylvan horn beast and those are the beasts that we saw in the trailers that are looking pretty fancy as nature beasts themselves not really with the school aesthetics anymore but actual animals but on top of that we do see a mega conley ish card in the likes of season slash mutant brutal slash sounds definitely like a mega colony card but other than that we have knight of friendship cyrus could be ne neonectar and we have a hopeful maiden again that's very neonectar ish so once again this confirms that we're going to see multiple aesthetics within the decks even though the main artwork that they're presenting everything might look to one specific clan now as for the final list we of course have the police waifus of brandgate and they're just like the one for dark states their list themselves isn't really that special it doesn't really pop out they just have generic grade three car accounts grade two counts grade one counts it's more of the balanced list without any wacky ratios like a random grade zero or a surplus on grade threes or grade twos like the other deck but the interesting part where a lot of people have been looking towards in this list is the order card itself called galaxy central prison galactolos and that sounds like a potential order card that sticks around and the reason why people are speculating that is because in a showcase when they showed the field there is a new field zone called order zone or just order and that might mean that we get order cards that stick onto the board and if there's one order card that sounds like it will stick onto the board it's this one but that's all just pure speculation and this is going to be confirmed or revealed in a couple of weeks once we get to this starter deck now as of the units themselves this is kind of hard to recognize any other unit the only card that i can say oh that isn't a waifu police girl is the craggy beast gear grant that sounds like a zeal type card but still in the vein of dimension police now even though only the list of the starter decks has been revealed you could say not a lot of information has been given to us but at the same time these five deck lists or you should or should i say four deck lists or where they had a dragon empire list tells a lot even though we don't have card specifics for one this confirms that yes there's going to be one main aesthetics in the starter decks themselves 
but there's going to be cards or focus in the future about other archetypes. We see Gear Chronicle like card with a Steam Gunner. We see a more we, we see Neo Nectar type names. We see Mega Colony type names. We see Nubatam or Murukumo type names. So it's very likely that your the older clans are gonna represent are going to be represented in some shape or form. But besides that. We see the confirmation that front triggers are going to be universal for everybody. That's a big thing. But also an interesting thing is that this new era is heavily going to focus, or at least the beginning part, is going to focus more on order cards. Because in a tri free set, all the Trilogs had the same generic order card, the Power Rise Elixir and that's it. But these starter decks have unique order cards that are tailored to their respective deck playstyle. And it's very likely that these order cards are going to be nation bound because Galaxy Central Prison Galactolis doesn't really sound like an order card that I suddenly can use in Dragon Empire. It sounds like it's made specifically for Brand Gate. So it's very likely that this new era, the Overdress era, is heavily going to focus more on these order cards and hopefully that brings more unique and interesting order cards and potentially blitz orders because that is something that we really really want but another thing that this list showcase and confirms something that i already have been speculating at the beginning when the right deck was announced is that deck building has been opened up to a lot of interesting concept and a lot of potential because these ratios that we saw in the cater sanctuary list or in the story chaos list is something we would have never seen in the past without the right deck. Because I don't see Boost Road make a 16 grade free trial deck for a nation for a clan or a 17 grade 2 deck that only runs 4 grade threes. That sounds absurd to make that for a starter deck or a trial deck for your players to start playing your game. That just sounds absurd without the right deck. So this confirms that at least Bushroad also wants to push us in a direction that thanks to the right deck, we can now experiment with these wacky builds and wacky designs. And maybe Bushroad is also gonna make cards or design cards in such a way that complements or promotes these interesting deck building concepts. So I'm very curious what the skills are going to be specifically for the Cater Sanctuary in Story Chaos 1, just with the fact what their ratios are going to tell us for how the decks are going to function, how they're going to play, because it's such a odd thing to see after we experience 10 years of regular Vanguard. Now, at the same time, I'm also very curious what all the order cards are going to do, because if they're going to go for a more order-heavy era where order cards are going to be more instrumental for your deck and maybe they're going to keep sticking this direction where we have all these order cards but usually the, you only want to play with one specific order card so maybe you want to build around your order card for some builds i'm very curious of what direction they're going to take and so i cannot wait till we see the actual skill reveals for these specific order cards themselves and that's about everything that we can discuss and analyze from these lists themselves because yes we now need to see the actual skills of the cards themselves and luckily those skills are starting to dribble in because today we saw the skill reveal of the grade one from the starter deck for or the Dragon Empire one, and it confirms a lot of things about the right deck itself and how they are going to structure these decks. But I'm going to talk about that card tomorrow because I assume that in a couple of hours later tonight, we're going to get the grade two. So I want to discuss them together once we get even more information. So with that said, let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below what you guys think of these ratios and the card names themselves that we can see in these starter decks. Do you have some speculation about how these decks are going to function or what a specific card might do? Because sometimes their names can give away what they might do. So let me know all your thoughts in the comment section down below. As always, this video has been brought to you by our lovely patrons over patreon.com slash insider. You guys are amazing. If you want to support the channel or everything that's happening on the channel, you can simply go to patreon.com slash insider and become a patron today. But with that said, I'm Mr. Timeleap and I'll see you guys in the next one!